Hello everyone, it's Cress, aka Taka. It is time for a rummage sell and thrift finds video. And to start with, happy cat day. It is August 8th. So this will cover from and go Monday, so Tuesday through today of this week, and I did find some really good things this week. So I'm gonna start with one of my best finds of the week. I found Pyrex. And this is a promotional pattern, and just so I get this right, I made sure to save the information. Alright, so originally this would have come with a little uh, wire thing to go under it. And there was, this is the smaller one. So this is number 43. It's a flower pattern in matte black on pale yellow. Uh, it, so it cradled decorator casserole. I did not find the cradle, unfortunately, but this is 1957. And it is known as Pressed Flowers, but it's not its official pattern name. It's just a Pyrex promotional. But they sell pretty well, and I've decided I better sell it because my father has a habit of putting anything in the dishwasher, and this is in too great of condition to let that happen to it. And it has its original lid and every. With that. And then my mystery piece for the week. So... It's a bowl made of silver plate, and it is quadruple silver plate, and it's marked uh, Homan Silver Plate Company, which I think, when I was looking it up, put it in between 1900 and 1912. For the, that was when the company went by that name. It's changed names a couple times. But this ends up having four pieces, so it has this beautiful engraved lid, but the middle of the lid comes off. Uh, there isn't like a ladle mark, so we're, we have no idea what this was for. So it comes apart like this. It's got some beautiful engraving on it. There is a, a personalized letter B on this side, but enough people have B last names so I'm not worried about. It is a little indented on the bottom. Then there's this uh, rim and this, and I did post this to my pickers group, and someone suggested there might be a glass insert that goes in here as well, but I didn't see any, and it would make it extra heavy for shipping anyway. So, but, yeah, we're, we're still trying to figure out why that has a lid that does that, and it, it's made perfectly for that spot, but it flips upside down very nicely. Okay, let's continue with things on the floor. Um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I've been doing a lot of puzzles. I've taken a four-day break, because the last one was heinous. <laughs> and I was upfront about that in my ad when I posted it on eBay. So I found this cool one that's 550 pieces. I've been really lucky. Of all the puzzles I bought, only two kids' puzzles were missing a piece. So this one I got because it's American Indian Tribes on the map, so I thought that was really cool. <sighs> then I got this one at Goodwill. I had 20% off, so it was like 48 cents, so if it's missing it, I'm not going to be sad, because like literally, I was at St. Vinny's before, and I literally saw one like this, but a different picture, but it was the same Peanuts line, and I counted 99 pieces, whereas I've never had them short me at Goodwill, so I trusted them, but it's Snoopy and Woodstock. And then my childhood got me. <sighs> Lady Lovely Locks. This is definitely 80s into early 90s. Um, I had her. Uh, this is a 68 piece puzzle, so this should take me, what, 20 minutes um, to put together. Uh, original Pound Puppies. Again, totally love this show. Uh, in fact, my favorite toy was Cooler. And I literally broke Cooler's nose off. It was hard plastic, and my mom literally made him a new nose out of yarn because it was my favorite toy. Don't fall over, man. And then a 200-piece Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So that one is a little more because it was Snow White. So 79 cents minus my 20%. I didn't even realize that day I had 20%. And then I got a few puzzles at St. Vinny's before that, and I risked it at St. Vinny's even though that's the place the pieces were missing from those other two, because um, they were adult ones and they were really cute. So got this the day before Cat Day. Uh, 
so it's a bunch of books, and they've changed the title, so it's like The Cat of Thrones, and said Cats of Thrones instead of the Games of Thrones, Anna Katarina, The Da Vinci Cat, The Kitty of Oz, The Cat of the Wild, Cat Sablanca, Lady Catterley's Lover, The Secret Garden Cat, 20,000 Cats Under the Sea, Harry Catter and the Wizard's Cat. So yeah, definitely more modern puzzle, but very funny. And then this one I got because it was all farm animals. And again, anything I, I sell either on my EB, my Macari, or my Etsy shop, if it's animal related, a portion of the sale either goes to, if it's farm animals related, kind of wild animals, it goes to um, Sunrise Animal Sanctuary. And if it's more pet related, it goes to my local shelter, you So... And right now, they're currently very closely tied at about $75 for the year each, so. Uh, okay, that's everything on that side of the floor. I'm going to save the books till last. All right, so I had to save this when I was at Goodwill earlier this week. It was $1.49 minus my 20%. It's a lone bookend, but it happened to be International Owl Day when I was shopping. So I kind of felt like I had to rescue an owl, and someone did a really nice job painting these. So, uh, And then this was the one rummage sale I got to yesterday. Uh, this was the only thing they had that... Nothing that they had advertised was actually there. It was great. Uh, so I paid 50 cents for this, and you may recognize it as a Hazel Atlas uh, pattern, but it's actually by Continental Can Company, which took over Hazel Atlas in 1956. And then the company shut down, I think, in 64. So I can date this to a 10-year period. But I got it because it had a bird on it. Um... Oh, so it's a dog on it. Uh, uh, another animal thing I got. Uh, I got this Timeless Teddy's Christmas. This is a reproduction of a 1909 bear named Bing. Um, I only paid a dollar for it. I don't know what it goes for. It's from 1999, so technically it's vintage enough for Etsy. But I thought it was cute. It was still in its box and had its story. Um, then... Salvage this little uh, piano ornament. Not the most detailed, but looks cute. Uh, in the line of Christmas, I got this little trinket box that is Fitz and Floyd, and it is called Kitty Kringle. I paid $1.50 and then cried my way to the car after the checkout lady dropped it. And the chip didn't come off till we got home because we checked it in the store and it hadn't chipped, but there's a little bit of paint loss right there. It's smooth though, so it's just the paint shook off. It's not, it doesn't actually feel like a chip. It's just paint loss. But it's little enough. It's on the very edge where the gold would have been. So if whoever buys it wants to put a thing of gold there, they can. I'm not going to touch it though. But it was very cute. It has a Thread, thread in the back, I guess. Bows and bows and bows. But it was Fitz and Floyd, so I got it. And this was one of my guys from Silver Creek. It was $4, and I just had to rescue him. He had such an interesting face. And I think he's at least from the 90s because his eyes have crazing. Um... And it was different because, like, it actually has a real face and the snout isn't, like, the cork, like, most pottery uh, piggy banks that I've found lately. Um, but when I got home, I realized it wasn't a name down here. It actually says Potter's Field. And then there's a little tiny initial that I can't read. Um, so it's actually a company's work. But I figured with the, between the plastic and that little bit of crazy, it's probably from the 90s. Because, like, even the, the bomb of what looked like it would be a lovely base pattern until you build in the top. It's really well done, actually. And then I got this little belt buckle. Probably pay about 50 cents. I think it was 59 cents and then my thing, but it's uh, a little walleye fish. And it's nice and ha good quality, and it's made in the USA by Bergamot Brassworks. Um, but it looks more silver than brassy, so... 
And then today I picked up this at the thrift store for 50 cents. It is a trivet set. And I have to re-glue the trivets. Like, I pulled... I tried to pull them out to check them out at the store, and this fell off the back of the first one. And I was like, just put it in the box, and I'll just make sure to reattach them all. Because if the glue's that old, it's probably going to go on all of them. But they also have things so you can use them as coaster trivet things. They are made in Sri Lanka by Lanka Wall Tiles. Mm -hmm. Lanka Wall Tiles. And they're just very cute, and I, knew, I had to find something cat on cat day. So there's... This one's the one it fell off of. So they're all different, but they're all tabby cats. But I made sure to put the hook that fell off back in the box. And it's just got its original box. You're hooking on that hook, aren't you? But you can see they're, they're very cute. Mm -hmm. And then I grabbed these today, and I thought it was just a set, but it ended up being one full set and one half set. So I have to see who goes with whom because the bows are a little different. Okay, you go with them. So little blue bow goose tablespoon teaspoon thing. And then there was another one in the bag that was done differently because the bows are different. But they're just cute. I'll probably still sell them all together as a lot. They're only 75 cents. And then I found went to a sale. He was charging a quarter for everything. So I picked up this... Uh, not sure which company did this. I gotta clean it up a little bit. But this cute little turkey napkin holder. And these adorable Hallmark salt and pepper shakers. They are plastic, so they're like 90s Hallmark. They do have the infamous Main China stickers on them, but they are Hallmark. I wonder what's inside her. <laughs> She's making noise. But they're these cute little... Uh, Mice or squirrel couple? I think they're squirrels. By their tail. But they're making a weird noise. Books last. Okay. Today I went to a sale and I found four things at the first sale in the pouring rain. And I was so happy she charged me a dollar for each thing. So first is a official bluebird of happiness. Uh, and I didn't even... Ch I, she taped on the label, bluebird of happiness tarot studios... But it's also signed Leo Ward, which is the good name, 1987. So I finally found a Bluebird of Happiness that was affordable. Because last time I saw a collection of them, they wanted like $20 a piece. And I was like, no, that's okay. So I did find one simple Bluebird of Happiness. And then I, I saw this actually in the picture for the ad and went, I bet you that's an emoji. So there's a little bit of pottery issues, but their manufacturer issues where the glaze bubbled. So it's like raised where it should be smooth. But this glazing pattern, I was like, that's an emoji. Because I found that little tiny vase that was an emoji at St. Vinny's last weekend or the weekend before. So I knew what it was. And someone put, okay, from Miss Davis... They actually have the 25,000 years ago, the ice sheet of the glacial age covered the land. It is now known as the primitive ancestors of our present Indians living here. So, thing is, this is not Indian pottery. That just so happens the name of the company is the name of an Indian tribe. But no two pieces are ever exactly alike because it's a like dip process of the glaze. So, stop. And then I got this cute little, I think, schnauzer figurine. It's unmarked. I assume it's Japan, but it's the first dog figurine in a while I've seen where no one's had to glue a leg back on. So that interested me. And, like, my major find at that sale was this. This is a veterinarian about to give a dog a shot. It is made of glass. Is fully made of glass. It's a little shoddily done by the where the shoulders came in. Where I'm not, I was almost like, is that glue? But no, it feels like bending glass. So I think that was factory. Oopsie, there. But it is marked imported uh, Czechoslovakia and something crystal. So I was looking him up while he was still in the car rummaging, and someone has. The lowest one was $9.99 starting bid, and someone else had him listed for $50 by it now. 
So for a dollar, I think I did good. Okay, the humidity is really building up. And that's why it's so humid in here because Rita forgot to shut our window. Oh, and my, I found two planters today. Um, I think they were both some... This one was 75 cents. It's a little cow, blue and white. And the only problem with it is the one horn has like a little dot off the end. It doesn't even look like it chipped all the way in. It's just a very tip got hit on something and went in. But it has this interesting mark on the bottom that's a shamrock that I, I have to investigate as a signature. And then... For $1.50, I picked up this Napco Wear Dachshund because he was just downright adorable. The only thing I could find wrong with him was like a little bit of color loss right there and some manufacturer's bubbles in the glaze. But he was so cute and so appropriate when I get to the books. All right, we'll do the toys next, then all the books. Ugh. Toys. So the first toy I found was Pluto here, and he's a more vintage Pluto. Uh, I think he's like from the 80s. He's still an applause toy. He's not from Disneyland, I don't think, or Disney World, but it's a cute Pluto. I paid 50 cents because toys were half off that day, and I paid 75 cents for this set still in the bag, and I have looked all my usual place for kids' books, so I might wait and see. It's called Good Night Sleep Tight, and it's it's a plush based on a book. And then for fifty cents or so a piece, I rescued Thing One and Thing Two. Don't know if I'm selling those yet. Uh, then it was ten cents a toy at St. Vinny's today, so I found a grimace in the toys. I didn't have grimace for my advertising. Found a Kung Fu Panda Po because I didn't. Oddly enough, I didn't have Poe or Praying Mantis out of all the characters. So, now I think I'm down Praying Mantis. Then I got the Christmas Tree Peep. And I picked up a Monster High Bat because it's cute. And for 10 cents, I thought I could rescue it. Now, books. First will be kids' books, then will be the find of the century. Um... So this one, I just loved the title. My mama says there aren't any zombies, ghosts, vampires, creatures, demons, monsters, fiends, goblins, or things. So I will read it, and then I'll probably sell it in a Halloween lot. And then I found another Maurice the Dac. Only problem with this is that the back cover's ripped. I might just tape that back together. And it's one I hadn't heard of. It is like someone's birthday present. They wrote in it, but it's still... They didn't write on the actual pages. And you can still see Murray Zedek's wonderful work. And this is from 1965. And then Halloween book I had to grab just to read for myself for Winnie the Pooh. I grabbed one of these because I'm trying to do a lot of the serendipity books. Because I remember loving them as a kid. So I picked up that. I think books were a dime today. Uh, this one was a dime too. It is a copy of Little Toot. And this is from 1939. And it is in wonderful condition. There's like a little dirt on the back cover right here. And it looks like it's more sticker residue from something. Um, but I thought that might be worth something. I didn't even bother it for Jensen's to look up anything. And then I grabbed another Sesame Street book, and oh, wouldn't you know it, the binding came off on my way home. But I will rebind, I'll re glue that, because I have a lot of um, Sesame Street books I'm going to put up. But this one was so cute because it was like a big year on Sesame Street, so they were celebrating an anniversary kind of like they did this year. And then a few more kids' books. Uh, Beatrix Potter sells really well, so I picked this up. It's a child's treasury of Beatrix Potter, dust jacket, and everything. And then, this was in the kids' section. It's My Fair Lady, which I got the soundtrack last week. And then, my last find of the day. Reference books! Uh, I went to the basement of this rummage cell where 
They obviously hadn't planned well for their outside space. They put things that could get damaged by rain when a thunderstorm was due. And so, like, all the records were ruined and that. So I wasn't getting too hopeful. And then I walk inside and there's a bunch of glassware and pottery. I go, well, I'll go down the basement first. And I happen to look in this closet where they left the door open. And there's, like, two bookshelves just stuffed full of reference books. And they're selling them for two bucks a piece. I'm like, well, I can't buy them all. But for two bucks a piece, I can buy some of them. I ended up buying eight. So I got this one called Vintage Barware, because I do love barware. So I thought that would be a good one. I got the Fiesta Ware book, because this brand confuses the hell out of me some days on what is the right one. And there's even some notes and other things in the book, like that she researched and left in here. So, grab that. I grabbed... The Inker Hawking Spire King and More Identification. This one's the only one I looked at. I looked at this one when I was in the car. And it, it's really great because it's got like old vintage ads in it. And I'm an ad person. So. And then I got Napco Wear, which just out of curiosity, do they have an index? Of course not. But I can attempt to see if my planter is in here that I got today. That was not go where that was a dog but they don't have like a table of contents but then i got a limoges book and i'm gonna look in here to see if those candlesticks i got are in here or not i mean i've already listed them for 75 and these aren't going to be good price guides they're all like 20 year old books but they're great for identifying patterns in that and i've never been on in for the pattern in the last month so uh, this is the second edition of the Limoges book. And then I got all three Fenton Glass books. The first 25 years, the second 25 years, and the third 25 years. Which I saw someone else in my group by the other week, so I thought it was really funny I found them too. So, but she had like, must have been 150 to 200 reference books there, and I was just like, well, I really was interested in Limoges just to find out more information on the one piece, napco wear I buy all the time, fiesta wear I'm confused about, and I collect bar wear, so I got that. But that was $16, and we figured my buy at the sale before would cover the price of the books for me. Um, so that it plus my promotional Pyrex for the week. So, I will put the links down for my Etsy and eBay shops of Trash Gateer Treasures. They're both under that name. Um, I would put a li link to Makari, but for some reason they don't let you shop link for some reason. I don't know. It's just your items are up and people find them in the search. Um, but really, I only use Makari if I find a really modern geeky thing usually. Where the market's like overflowing on eBay or something. Where it just doesn't pay to put it on a listing of 200 other people with the same item. Um... And I tend to list vintage on Etsy, but we'll see. I don't know if that, py I have one Pyrex on Etsy and I just sold some Pyrex on eBay, so I'm not sure which site that's going to end up on, but I must sell it for its own safety because I can't let dad get that in the dishwasher. All right. Thanks for watching.